Okay, perform the strike of the sacrifice. Bloop. And now, I need to... Firstly, get rid of you, go away. And you too, Dark Mage. Um, now, I don't need to worry about the creepers, because they are very, very worried about me anyways. I just want to cover this up, so that some of this will survive the morning. Do you mind? I'm really busy here. Okay. So, cover this up so that some of it will survive the morning, and then I can come and collect this at my leisure. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Witch in the Woods. I hope you're comfortable. I hope, hope you've all got your nice little, like, biscuits and cup of tea and all sorts. Uh, now, at first, now, of course, we had, like, to cut off the last episode because it was running a bit long. Um, but I did... Doop, doop, doop. Doop. Did manage to actually get the Cursed Earth in here. It's a little... It, it kind of clashes with, like, the actual, like, uh, the mossy stone, which I'm not too fond of, but on the other hand, it does significantly improve the effectiveness of this farm. Um, it's actually created some interesting side effects. Uh, if I just come up here, uh, for a way that I actually can, yep, boop. If we look over here in the filing cabinet, we've got a bunch of stuff. A couple of stuff I need to actually take out of here, evidently. Um, because there should not be arrows here. Well, there shouldn't be bows here at all. But if I hit to about here, we have five spell books. I also have a health potion, which means that something was hurting a witch. Um, these are empty, unfortunately, but those actually come from dark mages that keep spawning in there because of the uh, because of the cursed earth. Uh, and actually, go a bit further. If I go into the system here, we can see that. I have a grand total of 32 arcane essence, 10 spell parchments, and a variety of ruins. Oh, ruins, ruins. The ruins of the ruins of mages give me ruins. So I've got blank, blue, grey, green, light grey, magenta, orange, pink, red, of varying quantities as well. That's interesting. I don't have any spells. Nothing new there, but yeah. That's kind of a, just an interesting little side tip. Uh, so... Let me see, we left off on getting the activation ritual done, so I now have one activated uh, one activated division sigil, so we can use that for 256. Uh, emissaries I did a bit more work on, and, oh wow, why did I got teleported from the farms? Huh. Okay, well I have ways of dealing with you. Okay. That's a lot quieter. Evidently I blew out a little bit, but oh well. That's fine. I can fix that later. Ha! So, the way that Advanced Genetics works is we can give them various things. Now, unfortunately, we can't give them even half of the stuff I have. Or rather, we can, but it will make no difference to how they behave. So, if I give them teleporter, then a skeleton won't start teleporting. Um, he won't start shooting gas balls. He won't, he won't even take into account, like, new jump. Um, so I need to give them static things like more health, which isn't ideal, but it works. But uh, other than that, we can also give them different items. So in the case of Mine Chem, I can give them, say, a sword covered in cyanide. That'd be fun. I actually need to do that to my sword or somebody. But uh, that brings me to our next topic, uh, which is the enchanting. So I've got the disenchanter set up if I need to get rid of some enchantments such as these. But as I mentioned, these uh, will take damage as they go, and of course some of these are already kind of uh, knackered as it is. So I'm hoping to get magic resistance off of these because that seems to be hard to come by. I have managed to get three unstable, so we'll be uh, welding those together inside of this auto anvil, which also needs mob essence, so I've got it hooked up to the same system here. So let's just Blunk. Prepare only is turned off. So it takes a bit longer. I really hope I'm not about to mess this up. I messed it up. Great. That's one less unstable, but that's eh, that's not too bad. The way it goes is unstable one makes the explosion. Unstable two makes a really big explosion. Unstable three damages terrain. So uh, that is something. Is that not 
but now it won't. What? What is going on here? Something tell somebody tell me. There should be another unstable. There there should be something to do. If I do it over here, is it going to actually comply with me? Nope, not those. That. Unstable too. And I broke the anvil. Great, so I can't test that again. Hello. Right. Fine. Okay, so we've got magic resistance one and protection two. That can probably survive that. So that's good. So I've started delineating these, but they get shoved in really strangely by the system, so I don't know exactly what's going on. Uh, but we've got a bunch of stuff. Unbreaking, Time Lord, Step Up, Forms, Restoration, which I need to probably look into. Uh, no Hunger, I think, or Never Hungry. Yeah, that's in here. Leapfrog, Feather Falling, Fall Resistance, Blast Protection, Aqua Affinity, Treasure, Soul Stealers, Sonic the Hedgehog, Punch, Poison Ivy, Frugal, Higher Aspect, Efficiency, Vein of Arthropod, Smite. Getting a whole ton of things, not necessarily the things I want, though. But uh, there we go. Uh, okay, Protection 2. Yay! Now, uh, can I? Yes, I can. Of course, I can. Blit. Get that. Stick you in. Where have you gone? There. There have you gone. Uh, so yeah, occasionally I have to repair these, which is what I use the auto anvil for, just to make sure that I can grab all of the enchantments that I need. I'm looking for mostly magic resistance, as well as uh, protection, as well as uh, things like sharpness. And looting, which also seems to come out rarely because I don't. I mostly just get armor pieces from the mobs, so I'm gonna have to try and tinker with that as well. There are a few different ways I can enchant stuff, so that's something. But uh, Mind Cam offers us the most varied array of effects, um, potentially even the most painful and dangerous as well. Uh, but I thought I would finally get onto Mandrake farming. So the problem with, the problem with Mandrake farming usually is that if your harvester picks them up at the wrong time of day and occasionally even just at all, then it will spawn a mandrake which runs around and tramples your crops, uh, all of them. So it makes it harder to actually farm them. Now, here we've been using fertilized dirt. Now, fertilized dirt has a few benefits. So for example, if I stand on this emerald crop, which I don't mind losing anyway, and jump, I'm never going to actually... I'm, a, I'm never going to destroy it. I can sprint, I can sprint and jump, I am never going to break it. So we're going to use fertilized dirt, as well as a special little, like, confined area uh, to just start spawning and controlling our mandrake, so that we can make sure the system always has some. Uh, we'll probably have this one over here work for a Spanish moss. But uh, first we're going to get settled with our mandrake. So, it's going to be unusual in that we need three machines for this. Wait, unstable two in production two. Oh, I must have grabbed that. Yeah. Uh, so let me see. First, of course, we need a planter. Uh, I swear my client's being a bit sluggish. I don't know why. So, planter. Here we go. And we also need a harvester to get the mandrake when it is fully grown. And then we need a grinder to slaughter whatever mandrake survives. There we go. Lovely. Eventually. Kind of. Oh, we are missing two books. Uh, probably because we just did a bunch of stuff with the Disenchanter, which is automatically receiving books. Okay, my mistake. No worries. So, there we go. One grinder. And I'm gonna need a bunch of item ducks. We don't need fluid ducks, because we don't really need to care at all about the stuff that's coming out of the... Uh, well, we don't need to worry about the mob essence that's coming out. Uh, so let me see, we need a planter underneath. About here. The default range for a planter is the three blocks, so if I get out my precision sledgehammer... Yep, perfect. And then we need a harvester here, which needs to rotate. There we go. And we need a grinder here. Now this is not going to be a quiet system. This is, in fact, going to be quite magnificently loud. Um, which is going to be a pain, but we'll just sort of have to deal with it. Um, now, if I put a bunch of mag if I put a bunch of uh, stuff into that right now, then it's just going to start growing, uh, which is not what I'm currently looking for. I did manage to enchant a couple of pickaxes, actually, just while I'm talking about it. So I've got my lucky flux axe, which is fortune-free, efficiency-free for like grabbing stuff, like essence. And I've got my Silky one, which is Efficiency 5, Silk Touch 1, because when you're picking up the same block you're destroying, it, it doesn't matter if you're, like, an ungodly mining machine. 
as much anyways. So, let's see, we need, uh, this coming down here, and I'm gonna need a crescent hammer to pick this up. Cool. There we go. Okay. And this will, will we'll set this to only receive mandrake seeds. If it receives actual mandrake, then we need to filter that out so it goes up to that there. This was where the uh, digital miner was, but we've now more or less mined out everything that we care about in the area, so we're just going to put that into storage. User left your channel. Oop, okay, things are getting busy. Um, so let me see, fertilized dirt. I don't think I've ever shown how to make this, but we need a couple more pieces. So let's see. Fertil. Iced dirt. So just bone meal, dirt, and zombie brains. Which are the hardest things to come by, but thankfully I have a big, super effective spawner for it. Yay! Okay, I need eight. This is going to use the pulverizer, so it'll produce ten. Doop-boo-boo. There. There. And we need some redstone conduit, and a tesseract. Thankfully, I do have a spare tesseract. I'm not quite sure where I got it from, but I do have one. Okay. So, stick that there, stick that there. I s apparently I made free. I okay, not gonna complain really. Okay. Uh, so I need to feed power to all three of these. Uh, which might go better if I, put, if I moved the item ducts underneath another step. So, loop. Doop, doop, doop. Doop. And let me see, I'm going to need another route from here. Grab that while I'm at it. So, the mandrakes shouldn't ever spawn outside of this area. This, by the way, is the smaller area that I used to farm mandrake in, back when I made like a stack just to have a supply backlogged. Uh, okay, and there, there, and then we want you that that. And then we want a Tesseract here to give it all power. So, let me see. Owner me. Yep. Only receiving power. So, only receiving anything really right now. Doop, doop, doop. Doop, doop, doop. There we go. Only receive power. Good. Set. Is that really on main power one? Wow, main, main power is on one. I did not know that. Uh, so these should be fully charged. Good. So now, if I... Let me see. If I set... Whoop. Things are going crazy. What's going on? Uh, if I set that to there. And this to that. And pop out of here. That isn't backed up, by the way. A lot of people think it is. It's ac I've actually got enough saplings and wood now that I've just turned it straight up off. So, yeah. Okay, so these are all happily whizzing along. If I was to put mandrake here, it would gradually grow fertilized dirt, uh, in addition to not needing water and not being able to be trampled, also accelerates by about a factor of three the rate of, of crops growing, so that's something. Uh, okay, so now I need to enclose this and feed a line of the item ducts to here, so that we can actually receive the items coming out of here. Which is not a difficult task at all. There. So we just put a Sohei servo there so we can control to only whitelist mandrake seeds. So, servo. I usually have one or two spare of these. Because I do a lot of tinkering down here. And mandrake seeds. Okay, and let's see, we want to put that there, and we want to whitelist Mandrake Seed. And just for good measure, let's set that to dense, so it counts as really, really stupidly long. Okay. Now I just need to enclose this, and we can happily have our Mandrake being grown as, as and how we need it. Ha! Huh. Right, so that's one thing I figured out. Now, yep. homework, I... Like the, the, the last piece, like the first section of this video, was actually filmed as the original ending to the last episode, which ran a bit long, more than a bit. Um, so I was very distracted and busy. Yeah, we wouldn't normally see creepers in here, but thankfully the uh, cursed over is giving us a much wider variety here. Um, I did. I was like really busy and keeping an eye on the actual like. Oop. 
uh, keeping an eye on the moon so that I could make sure that we weren't all going to die for various reasons. Uh, I can probably use the bars. The bars are probably the better idea. Ooh, and we can craft more. Yay. Um, so, let the right one in. Uh, Ellie and Oscar. Now, somebody asked me on Tumblr, uh, or more specifically, someone contacted me saying that they weren't really sure who the monster in, uh, or who or what the monster inside of Let the Right One In was. And that is an extremely appropriate response, because it's very... It's 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 kind of hard to say for certain. You can obviously go to Ellie because joined your channel. well, oops, somebody's back. You can obviously go to Ellie. I'm just gonna uh, well, actually no, I can't be that because I'm not on the right thing. Dar. Um, you could say that it was Ellie because they're vampiric because they actually have to kill people to live off their blood and stuff. But they clearly show remorse. They clearly show elements of human nature. They clearly are like capable of genuine human affection and such, so they're not really monsters, they're not really a monster in that case. Um, you could say Oscar, but he's just a child, he's growing up, he's confused, he's bullied constantly, so is, if, if he is evil, it's certainly justified, but I don't think he is, because he also shows genuine human affection and concern. So the next thing that we can really look on, what am I looking in here for? Oh right, iron bars. Oh wait, not iron bars, stone. Um, so the next thing that we can really look for is... Well, let's see. We've got the adults, but they're all fairly, like, justified in their, like, approaches to anything. They're all, uh, scared, worried about this seeming, like, monster that keeps running around and hurting people and killing people and butchering people, like a, a serial killer, straight up. Um, in fact, Ellie's, assist, Ellie's like, companion is straight up a serial killer, uh, both in their eyes and in general. Um... So then we have one last group to look at inside the film, and that is, of course, the bullies that Oscar is constantly um, assaulted by and all sorts. Okay, I've got like one more piece here. Yeah, I don't think we'll have to worry too much about there. Uh, I don't think that light is going to be an issue in there. It doesn't seem to be showing up, so that should be okay. So if I drop a few mandrake seeds and now it should start growing. Doop. I only really have two. Oh, there must be more upstairs. Okay. Okay. Anyways. Stick these in here. Off they go. They're growing. Oh, and it's too dark, so some of them have already popped off. Uh, that is fine. I can fix that. So we sort of have to get to this point where we view that the people who have to kill aren't necessarily the bad people. We get to this point, this view, where the people who kill may in fact be doing it out of tender loving care and all sorts. We get this view that evil is not inherently hey, a set of up. actions. Whoop. I only done no time. Uh, anyways. <laughs> that is someone reminding me that they like my fox ears. Yay. Um... So yeah, I haven't seen the new version, I haven't seen the or the uh, Western remake, uh, a capitalist American pig dog trying to survive off of uh, uh, Norwegian, I think it is, Swedish maybe, um, uh, the, the, like, content and stuff. But, either way, we get to this state where we realize that... For all the common evilness and such of a given, uh, a given like behavior or action, the people who commit it aren't inherently evil. Like you, there's no checklist that you can follow that will define somebody as being evil. There's no, there's no like list of things you can do and be irreparably a monster. That doesn't mean that there aren't things you can do. There's, that doesn't mean that uh, everything that an evil person does is necessarily good either, but it means that the line between human, like, good man and evil villain isn't so straightforward, which is a thing that humans as a rule aren't very good at remembering. Um, the very classic example, of course, is Adolf Hitler. I'm not going to stand here and, well, sit here and uh, tell you that Adolf Hitler was a good guy, but I will tell you that he certainly believed he was. 
he certainly believed he was doing all of the good for his all of the good he could for his his country whom which he loved very dearly and at the end of the day if adolf hitler can believe the entire time that he's doing something good and meanwhile be orchestrating the deaths of millions who are you to say that he was wrong moreover who are you to say that you are right it's the it's that blurry line of morality that is actually utterly phantasmally terrifying which is why we tend to demon like demonize people like hitler uh but anyways our next uh, movie for the listings, our next piece of homework, is a George Romero classic. This is The Crazies. So this follows uh, a town that is afflicted by a engineered bioweapon, which naturally people are trying to keep quiet. That guy had an interesting hat. Um, which sort of drives people to violent psychopathy. Um, it makes people want to kill each other, makes people want to die. Um, it was intended as a biological weapon to stay to like deploy on enemy like military installations and just have them kill each other, which would be a fantastic weapon. In this case, it doesn't end up in their hands, however. It doesn't end up on the enemy. It's just an accidental leak, and that causes all manner of havoc. Now, there are two versions of this. The first one is from 1973. It was made by George Romero uh, of Night of the Living Dead and the subsequent films like Dawn, my favorite uh, fame. That one takes it in a very... That one takes it very much more as people are gradually going insane, and that leads to violent action. The 2008 remake uh, very much takes it more as a people are being driven to violent action kind of sensation. Um, at least one, like... Google search result that I found whilst looking for the poster describes it as uh, describes the victims of it as being zombies, and that's not a particularly unjust uh, description of them, I would say. Uh, it's a, it, there is a definitely a lot more visual element to it in the 2008 version, whereas the 1973 version, um, it was more, we don't know who is infected, we can only tell by behavior, and even that's getting blurred because everyone is panicking. Uh, but watch whichever one you want, I recommend both. Uh, both are decent movies. Obviously, I favor George Romero better, but with that, I hope you've enjoyed watching, and I shall catch you next time.